Amen. 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 Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Uh, just scanning the room a little bit, making sure I got everybody in here. Uh, I want to say good morning to everyone. Where's Miss Cookie Marie this morning? Let's see. I'm trying to get everybody in. Uh, but once again, I want to say good morning to everyone and happy Monday. And I uh, hope y'all had a wonderful weekend. Look like this weekend was full of a lot of things going on. And uh, that you found some good downtime to do some things that you enjoyed and uh, ready to get back into the room again. I'm always excited uh, to come back in with you guys at all. When I say at all times, I mean at all times, uh, because it's a part of the growth that God has taken place in my life, as well as, you know, uh, you guys. Um, last week's, oh my God, last week's message, the week before, uh, during the time when y'all are praying in the room, uh, man, we have shifted in so many ways and, oh God, it's just, it's indescribable. And, um, and even from the relational real to everything that's going on, is going to be amazing. And I hope that uh, you guys will plug in every opportunity you get to anything that's going on because it's going to be helping us to build our relationships on so many, so many different levels. Well, I want to take a moment to say hello this morning. Uh, we're going to be doing an introduction uh, like we always do on Monday mornings, uh, talking about our conversation topic. And uh, this morning, uh, this week, we're going to be dealing with uh, quite a few uh, what we call relational intelligence. You know, not saying that you're not intelligent right now. Uh, but sometimes we are kind of uh, dragging behind when it comes down to people, uh, developing your people skills. And as you are growing and becoming effective, you know, within your own walk, um, I want you guys to be able to pay attention to things that's going on in other people's world so that, you know, we're not having a lot of these situation shifts or whatever, or uh, having a lot of emotional imbalances you know, the more you learn about who you are as a human being, you know, the people that we walk with on this earth, life gets a lot better, you know. So um, I just bless God for the opportunity here. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet last night with our uh, group. Uh, let me get Stacy in the room also. Make sure I get everybody. Uh, we had an opportunity, unless she's already on the line, we had an opportunity to meet last night with the Relational Real Talk group, and, and I just pulled a couple other people in that have been uh, joining in the class, and we went to uh, situationships on a topic that we did not discuss in the room, and it was with friendships. Sometimes your friendships can become situationships, and the way that those ladies pulled that stuff out last night and gentlemen pulled that stuff out. I'm like, oh my gosh, we we forgot to talk about that. So I uh, hope and pray that as we begin to start talking this week, that we will kind of throw uh, that one into the, you know, the pool as well. Not only did we forget to talk about friendships, situationships with friendships, but we forgot to talk about situationships when it comes down to mom and dad. Because sometimes you can have some strained relationships with your parents. And sometimes you can have some strange situationships with your siblings, situationships. And I'm hoping and praying that God will allow those things to be tied in and that as we are continuing to go, see, that's what's going to start bringing uh, you into these rooms more and more uh, because it's hitting on those particular things that you're dealing with every day, you know, uh, and it caused you to open up. I think one of the major tricks uh, that the enemy plays with us is when he blindsides us and he makes us think that what you're going through right now is all that it is that's going on in the world. Ain't nothing else happening except for what you're going through right now. And then you stop and realize, oh, I got these other things going on. And that's what makes you become overwhelmed with a lot because you start thinking, oh, it's just too much. No, it's just life. And sometimes we have just been focusing on one particular area for a long period of time. And we're not understanding that that's not all it is to life. There are some other things. And, and, and what we do, we become very anal uh, with a lot of things and we stop growing. 
Uh, remember we talked about last week, one of the reasons that we're not growing um, in that area of, um, of balance uh, in our situationship or learning from them is because we're trying to have everything perfect. You know, and, and a lot of that is because we want order, we want order, we want order, and we don't like anything when it gets out of place. But that's just a part of life. You know, that's what causes us to be in the therapist's office for a long time, for years and years and years, because all we want, we keep trying to tell the therapist the same thing, but all I want is for it to get in alignment. But all I want is for them to get in alignment. But all I want, and we keep saying the same thing over and over again, and we can't see outside the box. And so we say the therapist's not working or the counselor's not working. And it's not that it's not working. It's just that you're seeing it just from one dimension. And you have to be able to stretch beyond that. And what a good um, uh, a person would with, and we're going to talk about this morning, with emotional intelligence will do is will help you to stretch beyond what it is that you see, because that's not all uh, that's taking place around you. So uh, I'm excited about the message this morning, and I'm I'm excited to hear how God has taught me uh, about these things, because I have to digest it first, and then the anointing sits on me for that, and then I'm able to disperse it out to you. And then you get the portion that belongs to you and you make that thing make sense to you and you start lining up your household and then the therapist ain't got to line out your household no more. Because sometimes we feel like we paying the therapist to line stuff out for us. We over there taking ownership over something again, becoming very controlling. Now I say, well, the therapist ain't no good. They didn't help me do nothing. No, you were wanting them to do it for you. And in essence, they were supposed to be just unraveling things for you to see. And then for you to get the tools that you need to work through some things, if that makes, makes sense to you. Great thing about it, the more you open up your heart to, to learn and be receptive, God will begin to start sending new people along the way. You know, that's that phrase, when the student is ready, the teacher will, the teacher will show up. The more your heart opens up to receive, the more God will begin to start sending people that will help you to grow in those particular areas in your life. You know, great thing about the God that we serve, he just does not give up on us. You know, if we don't get it in one season, I promise you, he's not gonna give up on you. He's just gonna come through another method. And remember I told you last week, the mystery to the kingdom is for believers. And a lot of times where he's having to come into our situations by using parables to us, you know? And, and uh, I wish I could get to the scripture where um, uh, you remember when David had gone into Bathsheba and, um, you know, David is out of place. He's supposed to be standing on the front line serving, but because David is out of place, he found a situation shift, got into a situation shift, and David did not want to admit what was taking place. So his thing was to escape the reality of what's really taking place. And I'm just going to have a husband kill, you know, since he's serving in the army too, or, or in battle too, I'm just going to put him on the front line. You know, it's possible that he's going to get killed on that front line. And David is just, that's, that's, that's the, that what they call, they call that, um, 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 what they, what kind of murder that it, do they call that attempted, not attempted, but, um, Oh God, when you, when you thought it out, you know, you literally premeditated. It, premeditated murder. That's what they call that. And here David is walking around with premeditated murder in his heart, knowing what he did and trying to serve God. You know, David has to get instructions from God to be able to be successful in battle. But if you got an alt between you and God that you haven't dealt with and you're thinking that, um, you know, God is just going to turn and blink his eye to that, you know, your sin is ever before you. That's why I say you don't have to worry about when other people do somebody wrong. Their sin is ever before them. And it is up to God to, you know, sometimes he has to bring that stuff before you to help you to deal with it. He comes into your situations. And what he did was, since David was his child, 
he sent the prophet after him. Remember I told you the fivefold ministry would come after you? He sent the prophet after him, Nathan. And Nathan began to, by, listen, by this time, David has estranged himself from God to where he can't um, hear directly from God anymore. Or he's not admitting that he's hearing from God. So Nathan got to bring parables to him. He got to bring all these different parables because the mystery, you can literally hear God's voice and understand what he's saying. But when you're out of alignment with God, that's when you get all them parables and, you know, what they talking about, you know, when the pastor talking, what is he saying? I don't understand what he's saying. But the mystery, when I don't understand something, the first thing I do was, you know, Lord, I thank you for, you know, the message that went before me. God, I thank you that, you know, the place that I hold with you, you know, that you will help me through this. And y'all, I have to admit sometimes, even with me, there are some things that God has still has to speak to me in parables with, because the mystery seems to be far from me, you know, and, and I don't seem to be getting what it is that I need. But if I wait on God, the Lord will begin to start sharing with me what it is he's talking about. And then it's like, oh my God, I got it. I understand. But a lot of it also comes when the Lord sends other people into my life to help me grow, whether it is a uh, Bishop Samuel Blakes, whether it is a Bishop uh, Bishop Jakes, whether it is a Sarah Jakes, whether it's Bishop Noel John, whether it's y'all, I've learned so much from y'all. Y'all, sometimes my friendships, they'll call me off and say, you know, hey, Marilyn, you want to get away for a little while? And y'all, there's a learning curve of something that I learned. Parables. He's having to teach me in different things. He has to put me in situationships so that I can learn those things. There's nothing really wrong with either one, but you, you seem to get um, to your, your set place when you are walking closer to God yourself, you know? And you can really sit down and um, have that one-on-one -on -one communion time with God and allow the Lord begin to start speaking into your life. So we're going to be moving forward this morning, going a lot deeper. So I would recommend, uh, guys, that you get your, your pads out, your tablets out, because a lot of information is going to be uh, going out to you on today. Um, I want to stop for a moment and um, pull the scriptures that I wanted uh, because I had so much, uh, so much when I tell you that I want to uh, share with you guys. And I want to get those scriptures laid out uh, before I actually do that. <clears throat> and it is, it's a, it's a place where you're talking about having to um, uh, come to a place of understanding. And, the, and this is where our scriptures are going to be coming from, you know, helping us to understand, you know, one, that God's ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, you may have thought that you understood all the things that were going on in that situation, or you thought that you had all the answers to it. But in that one of the things that stops us from growing, we think we know it all. And you really don't have the answer to it all. Uh, so let's go into the scripture first. Then we're going to do a breakdown of what we're talking about, relational intelligence. We're going to be looking at our IQ, our EQ, and our AQ during this time. Amen. Amen. So one, uh, if somebody would put these scriptures in, uh, Psalms 119, 130. He says, the under unfolding of your words gives light. And it parts understanding even to the simple. The understanding of your words. You know, sometimes I have to stop and ask God, what do you mean by that? Can you give me a better understanding? You know, Proverbs 14, 29. He said, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding. But he, he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Again, Proverbs 14, 29, whoever is slow to anger, if anybody can put those in the chat box and I'm going to see, there we go. See if I can get here, make sure to look at that. Okay. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. 
Another one we want to look at it, Proverbs 2, 2 through 5. Amen. The other one was Psalms 119, 130, for whoever's putting it in the chat box. Proverbs 2, uh, verse 2 through 5. He says, making your ear attentive to wisdom, inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as a hidden tre as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. One more time, making your ear attentive to wisdom, inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, he says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Last one I want to go to is 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, 1 through 17. Give me just one second. I'm about to go in just a little bit deeper into that word. <sighs> it says, but understand this, that in the last days, there, there will come times of difficulty for people who will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpleasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good treacherous, reckless, swollen in conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying the power. Avoid such people. He said, for among them are those who creep into households and captive and take captive weak women, burdened with the sins and led astray by various passions always learning and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jam Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Men corrupt the mind and dissatisfied uh, regarding the faith, but they will not get far for their folly or their wrong will be plain to all in just a little while, as was those of those two men. And I want to stop right there. Look, verse 10, I want to stop at this one. He says, you, however, have followed my teachings, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience and love and steadfast, and my, uh, my persecution and suffering what happened to me in Antioch. And he says, which persecution I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. You saw all these things. This is Paul speaking to them. You saw me go through all of those things, but you also saw God res rescue me. What I would recommend as, you know, when y'all have some downtime today and you're just sitting around and maybe want to go to the cafeteria and go snack and go eat on something, you know, putting some things in your body that you, that you know, you're going to have to deal with after a while, you know, whatever, whether it be unhealthy conversation, unhealthy eating or whatever. I recommend you guys go back and read the scriptures today. Get those scriptures in your heart because remember, we're getting ready to go on, on a fast. And what God is doing right now, he's loosening up that ground so that you can be ready when we get ready to go into the new season. Get those scriptures, start reading up on them, start meditating. All of the scriptures have to do with getting a good understanding. And that's what we're going to be dealing with this week, raising your, your IQ, your EQ, and your AQ. Amen. Well, let me stop for a moment, say hello to everyone. Then we're going to go into prayer and we're going to get started with this message on this morning. Amen. Uh, well, let's see. Did I get off my screen? Uh, I want to say good morning, Mrs. Amanda. Good morning. Good morning. Miss Amanda, we got another young lady like you that's going to be joining our house. And I'm so, so excited for both of y'all. Uh, Mrs. Anita Taylor. Good morning, Miss Sharwin. Good morning. Uh, Mrs. Nene. Good morning. Miss Demetri. Good morning. And y'all, I'm hearing in my spirit, wake up. Everybody wake up. 
Everybody wake up. That's, that's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Everybody wake up. This morning, it's Monday morning, but wake up. You don't want to be out of place. Okay. Good morning, Mrs. Didi, Amy, Ms. Donisha, Ms. Felicia Johnson, uh, Mrs. I think that's Stacy, that may either Stacy or Mrs. Uh, Linda that's on the line. <laughs> I can't remember which one. Uh, Mrs. Delcina Mangrum, good morning. Ms. Shannon McCray, good morning. Mrs. Kathy Mitchell, good morning. Ms. Katambra Jeffries, good morning. Ms. Latoya Hansen, good morning. Ms. Marie, Cookie Marie, good morning. If the iPhone person will put their name in there and let me know who you are so I can know who I'm speaking with. Ms. Cookie Marie, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Nikki Prentice, good morning. Regina Oliver, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Stacey, good deal. Mrs. Robin, good morning. Mrs. Ruth Jennings, good to see you this morning. Mrs. Shanique Hansen, good morning. Ms. Sheena Fight, good morning. Ms. Shelly Roman, good morning. Mrs. Chick Holmes, good morning. Ms. Tanisha Bright, good morning. And Mrs. Tamika Franklin, good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, let's go ahead and go in for a word of prayer. And y'all feel free to use the chat box as we are uh, conversating this morning uh, to kind of get your conversation or your questions out there. You know, don't, don't, don't uh, hesitate uh, to say, Ms. Merrill, stop right there. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? You know, that's where I am right there. Because what y'all do is help me to engage uh, with the conversation and it pulls on the anointing on me because there are some things that God is bringing revelation to me too as well. So feel free to use the chat boxes. If someone would the, to put the title of the uh, message this morning in the chat box, again, it is we're dealing with relational intelligence. We're looking at our IQ our EQ, and our AQ. Amen. Well, let's go in for a word of prayer. Amen. All right. Well, Father, we, we thank you for bringing us to this hour. Uh, Father, every week that we come together, we're, we're so excited about what it is that you're doing. Um, I'm just reminded in my, in the word where you said, eyes have not seen and hear, ears have not heard. It hasn't even entered into our heart just yet the things that you have prepared for us, but it's being revealed by the spirit. Father, I can't help but to think back on just yesterday or last night. Uh, we went to bed with some questions on our heart, went to bed with some questions on our mind. Some of us are in some seasons in life to where we got a lot of question about questions about a lot of things. You know, we're trying to play catch up with life. And we're just trying to figure out, God, which way do I go? And Father, to be honest, uh, we have to admit, sometimes we've been in some strange places. We've been in some situationships too long. And um, it could have it could have come from a number of things. Uh, sometimes it comes from survival. We're just trying to survive. You know, we're trying to keep our head above water. Uh, sometimes we just want to feel good about ourselves, feel connected to someone. Uh, sometimes we just at that place where we just want to avoid all and we just have a busy thing going on with us. We've got a lot that's going on. And so those files have a tendency to stay open night after night, day after day. And so much to the point to where we feel like we're carrying weights all the time. You know, we're carrying the weight of, um, of of our lives. And sometimes we're carrying the weight of our parents' lives. And Father, if you have um, blessed us to be elevated with our career, we're carrying a lot of those things. So Father, we're laying down at nighttime. We still got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, Father, we just need you to help us to make this thing make sense. Uh, Father, you said in your word that many are the afflictions of the righteous, and we saved on top of all of that. We got a relationship with you on top of all of that stuff. But you said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but it is the Lord that will deliver us out of them all. So, Father, we come at attention this morning. That's why I hear you saying, wake up, catch you them little foxes. Is going to come and destroy your vine this morning because you won't wake up. Father, we overindulged in something to where we did not take just our proper portion. 
We took on a little too much. So now we're having to kind of detox from some stuff, even on this morning, so that we can make the load a little lighter. Uh, Father, I pray your blessings on this message this morning. Uh, as we're talking to all of us, you're talking to me too. And I pray this message will be a, 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 a game changer. Just like the last couple of messages, our message all year long, they've been game changers. We didn't know we needed all this stuff done in our lives. And we're wondering, that's why life seems so heavy. I've had so many situations going on, but I didn't have anybody to sit down and to help me to unravel these things in love. There were some people that came along, but they were people that were condemning. There were people that, you know, were trying to act too sanctimonious, like they never did anything wrong. There were people that were condemning and all kinds of things. But Father, I thank you for the ability to sit at your feet. And Lord God, you, you speak a love language to me that I understand. I even thank you for the people that you've brought across my path that evidently has been through this same thing that I've gone through. And they got a little bit more compassion. They got a little bit more concern. And uh, Father, they're considering themselves. So I thank you for it all. So, Father, now that we're sitting at the table, do, do a great work, Lord God. Just do a great work in us. And, Father, we thank you. Lord, bless this day as we get ready to move forward because we're unraveling from all these conversations we're getting ready to have. And we're trying to put these things on top of that. Apply, does that apply to that? Does it apply to that? So, for we thank you already for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all let me get some. Oh, there it is right there. My heat. <laughs> Had to get my heat on every morning. So let's kind of uh, jump in and uh, talk this morning. Uh, we're talking about what I call relational intelligence. And uh, some of you may not have known that there is a such thing uh, as relational intelligence, uh, but it is. Uh, relational intelligence is just a combination of emotional and ethical intelligence that involves the ability to be aware of and understand our own emotions, the emotions of others, values that people have, interests that people have, demands that they have, and uh, not be discriminative against the things. You know, um, people have their own um, makeup in life, and we don't want to discriminate uh, with any of those things. Um, and we use emotional intelligence to crucially, I mean, crucially reflect on um, how to use uh, the information that we've learned about people, you know, and uh, situations and circumstances, things that we've gone through, you know, uh, to be a guide for us you know, to help us to provide uh, the proper actions and have the proper behavior uh, and respect for other people, relational intelligence. That's what it comes in to do. But in order to get to what I call relational intelligence, there are some other things that we have to look at, like what I call the IQ. And I think many of you know about IQ. Uh, it has a lot to do with the... Um, you know how you know how it is. We always asked about what is your IQ, the in, in, that your intellectual intelligence quotient. That's what IQ stands for. You know your ability to learn. Um, you know um, sometimes people say that they've got a, um, a a high IQ. We think sometimes that you know, and 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 sometimes it is it is correct. The higher your IQ is. Uh, people call them smart people or whatever. And then sometimes, you know, you'll even um, throw yourself in the equation and say that I'm not that smart. And, and what you may be saying is that my uh, intelligence quota is not that. It's just my experiences in life. Either my experiences or the things that I've learned. Some people have a, a high IQ uh, when it comes down to books. You know, have you ever met anybody They you, well, you know how we say it in the black community, uh, they got books in, but they ain't got no common sense. <laughs> they have a high intelligence quotient, very, very smart. But when it comes down to people, or we call it common sense, 
that you should have known to do that or not to do that, they score pretty, they score pretty low. It kind of reminds me of the pandemic. You know how it is. There were some people sitting in some high positions and there were some people sitting in some low positions or in the middle or whatever. But the pandemic made you to come on even planes because we all got affected by this thing. To be honest, we all get affected by relational intelligence also. Because sometimes you on a high IQ about some things and you kind of on a low IQ about some other thing. Um, Chick said something in the relational real talk room the other night um, that um, I never heard it like this. We were talking about those situationships and she was talking about the gentleman that she had been dating. She said he had street credit. And I said, street credit? And I had to think about it. And she went in to break it down a little bit. He was highly respected in uh, the field that he worked in or whatever he was doing. And at, and we were talking about, you know, people that were selling drugs. He had high um, street credit, you know, and sometimes we think that people are real smart. Uh, that's what we call the bad boy sometimes. He's a good bad boy because he's smart in some areas, but he weak in some areas too. Does that make sense to y'all? You you got a high intelligence on one, one level. As a matter of fact, you're more intelligent than you think you are. You're just using it for survival right now. You're not thinking outside the box to say, I got to do something else after this is all over with. And I've got to grow and understand, you know what, if God gave me the intelligence to, you know, put these numbers together to, you know, know how to run this play or run that play or how to put people on the team, the right folks, whatever, and then how to discipline people. I'm disciplined, but I'm disciplined sometimes in the wrong way. That's that. And in, in, in your IQ needs to be at a place to where I balance this score. Because sometimes I think that I'm real smart over here, but I wonder why I went to prison. Some, some not adding up. And some people use their time in prison trying to figure out why they wasn't as smart. And why they couldn't get away with that is, you know, sometimes we 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 have a tendency to feel that uh, what we may have been um, dishing out was all that it was, and it's like this can't be true. You know, I'm smarter than that. You know, I can do better than that. And so now you're dealing with another situationship because you're you're you know sometimes thinking that that people are uh, criticizing you or trying to make you feel like you not intelligent, you know, all of that. So you're going to try to go do it again. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. It ain't that you necessarily um, uh, didn't get the message that you got caught. It's the thing that I'm dealing with. Why did I get caught? I'm smarter than that. And it landed me in here. And so what you do is you try to do it another way. It's the same thing you would do out here in the real world. It's called if you if you fail at something, you pick yourself up and you learn from it. But sometimes we're not learning the lesson properly. We're just going to get back up and we're just going to do it again and do it the same way, maybe with a different face and understand why things didn't go the way that they should have gone. Intelli intelligence quote. Next thing that we're going to look at is your, your EQ. This has to do with your emotional quotients, okay? Your emotional quote. This has a lot to do with the, the ability to um, understand the ability to sense certain things, okay? You know, how, how do I um, deal with the emotional well-being of myself? You know, how do I uh, get to a place to where um, I'm, I'm learning more about how that made somebody else feel and what I did to someone else. That's why a lot of times when you find um, our emotional intelligence, that's what we're going to call it. Um, 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 when, when I've wronged someone else, I can't understand, you know, uh, why they trying to act like that's a big deal. I've been hurt all my life. 
you know, and someone's trying to make it feel like that's a big thing. See, if you don't get to know people and the mindset of how a person can um, do a wrong and not understand why they and, and not get the fact that they did it wrong. Sometimes that emotional intelligence or emotional quoting is not there, you know, and with this, uh, the emotional intelligence, what it does, it helps us to understand our own emotions first. See, because if you don't understand your emotions, you have not processed your own. You surely not going to process somebody else. Well, I made it through it. This is how parents sometimes raise their kids with a lack of emotional intelligence. They raise their kids and feel like, well, I made it through it, you know, I don't know why they can't. So we don't have an, a, a feeling for them, you know, with this emotion until you have to even get to a point to where you start building your self-esteem up. Sometimes it takes the therapist to take you there. Let me, I, let me back up. Sometimes it takes you getting to your wits end to get there. Yeah, sometimes it can be narcissistic. That's what we call it. But a lot of times it's lacking emotional intelligence. It's like done about it. If you think about it, even narcissistic people, very controlling people, uh, check the behavior. It's always good to have a conversation with people, y'all. Find out where they come from. You know, what was life like? And ladies, I say to you, when you dating people, ask the questions. What was it like? They tell you where they're from. Get off that surface level of, hey, you know, what you doing? Get into an intelligent conversation to be, to where we can develop emotional intelligence with this. And you hear them talking about a passion of something in their heart. You know, what was that like? That's, that's emotional intelligence. See, because what you're, what you're looking for is a commonality with that person, with you. See, when I think about growing up in my hometown, I think about such and such. I think about this. See, you're going to hear if there's a disconnect somewhere going on, emotional intelligence. You're going to hear where, you know, and th this is a this is a, a pet peeve of mine now. Um, I didn't get it a long time ago, but I saw that there was some patterns with men that had bad relationships with their fathers. And there's a pattern with women that have bad relationships with their mothers. They don't make connections properly like they should. And if they have not processed within themselves first, that emotion, most of the time, and I could, I mean, I'm, I'm not absolute correct about this, but most of the time when you find um, a woman that's very um, um, hard to get along with, you know, um, they just don't get along with other women, all that kind of stuff. Most of the time is they've got some type of issue with other with women, and most of the time it starts with mom. And emotional intelligence tells me um, to listen, to get to know people. See, when I find women that are um, very, um, uh, I don't know, something we ain't, we ain't clicking with, I always stop to unfold. And that thing always comes, um, comes out about their moms, about their relationship with their mother. Didn't make the connection, didn't make the emotional connection. Sometimes took them off the took them off the breast too quick, weaned them too quick, all that kind of stuff. And there's not a connection that's there. Same thing with men. Uh, one thing I have uh I have discovered is that um when you're when you're dating or uh, are in that pool to where you're looking for that that mate that's going to be equal to you or whatever listen to the way they talk about their fathers you know that's so and so and you know he ain't he never been there you know or they cuss him out real real bad yeah you're gonna have some problems with that individual sometime 
And uh, it takes a lot of situationships, them having to go through life to get an understanding. A lot of times they say a lot of the boys that are in prison, um, it's not 100%, but a lot of the boys that are in prison are in prison because there is a lack of a father figure in their lives somewhere. Emotional intelligence, you know? And, and late, yes, yeah, Shanique said, ask those tough questions. We are all products of our experiences. Gotta ask those uncomfortable questions. Yeah, you do. And then listen, wait for an answer. Don't just ask the question and don't wait for an answer. That goes back to the IQ. You may be smart on one level, but anytime you meet new people, just know your IQ ain't that high in their lives because you ain't been there before. You have to raise your level of awareness with people. And you can't take everybody at face value because people have learned how to put on a good face. They've learned how to do all the right things. You know, I know that, you know, in some way they don't learned it from TV or they've learned it, you know, uncles, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And when I say uh, no father figure, I'm not talking about their literal dad. I'm talking about a father figure, a grandfather, an uncle, um, uh, mentors, all those kind of things. Because no, most time when you have those type of people in your life, it helps you to develop and process through a lot of things that are going on, you know, that, that, that EQ, the emotional intelligence. And, and it's a hard, sometimes a hard lesson to learn when we have not um, um, uh, identified that that may be wrong. That may be the problem. You know, I'm, I keep running into the same situations and I don't understand it, God. I, I just don't understand. It. It's because there's a level of awareness that needs to be brought before you. Uh, Latoya says sometimes people use that as survival mode. That's true. Yes. Uh, Regina also said, yes, Lord, check that background and family history. Know what you're getting into. That is so, so true. You know, watch it. Uh, Y'all, I watch these, um, um, I think it's called uh, Fiance or Family. Y'all, I, I watch that show a lot. And there was this one young lady that came on. And this young lady, she was dating, she was dating this older guy, first of all, okay? Uh, she's dating this older guy. And he was from another nationality, another, you know, country or whatever. And they were doing very well together, supposedly. And, but when they brought the families together, um, she heard him saying that N word. And the family heard it too. And they wanted to know, why are you bypassing? Did I just hear him say that? And he swore up and down. No, I didn't say that. And evidently she had been dealing with him with this kind of stuff before, but it was only until the family came in that she had to face it. And so they had pulled them to the side and were talking. And she said, why did you say that you didn't say that when you did? And he said, no, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say, I knew then that was gonna be a problem because he doesn't even have the respect enough to, uh, or he doesn't even think of you to be intelligent enough to know the difference between what somebody said and what they didn't. And sure enough, that relationship, it took that young girl a minute to unwind from that. And I kept thinking, what's missing in her world that she didn't catch that? Because she was bound and determined she was still going to marry this guy. They had fun. And it could have been because he probably was spending money on her. He probably was treating her very well. And some women will um, look over the fact that I'm not getting good treatment from this guy because this guy is taking care of my needs. I'm getting to get my nails done, get my hair done. I get to look the par. But you don't know what you're dealing with in the background. And it's only until the family comes to the table that we start un unraveling all that stuff. And then th that's what I call narcissism. That guy acts as if even the family is not intelligent. They don't know what they're talking about. 
And some of that may come from that very dominant role. In the, and it could have been, she may have liked somebody that was very strong, you know, somebody that could take the lead. Because when they started unfolding, it was a whole lot of dysfunction going on with her. She didn't look like it at the beginning. She, when I tell you, she was glittered up. Yes. She was glittered up, look good, talk good, everything. Little old petite little old girl. Look good. But her mental state mm -mm, came unglued. She was ready to blow up and fight. She probably had been holding all that stuff in for a long time. And that's why I say you want to be mindful. And that's why I'm bringing these things to you guys, because just in case you got stuff like that going on in the background, we need to get to it. See, sometimes the therapist will get you here and sometimes they won't. Because it just depends. <laughs> and you got to have people that love you and care about you. And that will hear the mystery of God. And I don't have to sit in a session with you a thousand times getting parables. I need to hear a mystery. All of my mentees that come in for private sessions, I get mysteries to them. I'm not coming in with parables because I'm not. I'm trying to get them already out of the confused state of where they are. And somebody going to have to be free. And somebody's going to have to be bold to speak the things that need to be spoken. Does that make sense to y'all? So I don't need God speaking to me in a parable about something that he has assigned me to. I need to have the mystery to this. Relationship, I don't need no parables when it comes down to relationships because it's too costly, too costly. I need to have the mystery behind this thing. So I'm raising my IQ my EQ, and then the last thing that we're going to look at, at is your AQ, and that is your adaptability, that quotient, for you to adapt to certain things. You know, some people, it's hard for them to adapt to change. Yeah, that's, why, that's why we don't make it to uh, the next phase of life, is because that adaptability is, is all off somewhere and 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 it and it's and it's difficult and challenging when we don't look at that quote we we we've heard of the iq and you may have heard of, of eq but i don't know if you've heard of aq your adaptability that when you even hear these different things that need to be done do you literally go in and say oh my god that's what it is. I'm having a hard time adapting to change. That's because sometimes we're too controlling. You know, you know, we're, we're too controlling about a lot of things. And we just don't always, you know, we look at everybody else. It must be them. You know, it can't be me. It's got to be them. No, if it's happening around you, it's probably in you too. The adaptability. You know, my, my I'm telling you, me, sometimes it has been difficult to me, for me to adapt. Uh, Y'all, I remember when when I had to mute, move to Houston, um, um, that was a hard place of adaptability uh, because that was not home to me. That's what I felt. And my, I, I just couldn't make sense of all, y'all moving too fast. You're doing too much doing too much. I can't, I can't get, I can't, I can't, I can't comprehend all this. We dealt with, we've dealt with death. We've dealt with picking up and moving us from a city. That the only thing we know you're moving us to a new place and we're supposed to adapt to all of this stuff. No, what we needed was some counseling. We needed somebody to come in and help us to walk through counseling does not mean that anything is wrong with you. It does not. It just means that there you're going through a phase of life that's different, you know. And anybody that's going through death, you're you're in a different phase. You're not, especially if you've never gone through it before. And then it depends on who died. Something that you brought, someone that you brought into this world, and something happens to them. I got to adapt to this new environment. It, it don't seem to be fitting me, God. I can't, I, this thing don't make sense to me, you know? And Lord, I just need you. I, I know that, Lord, you're real. 
I know that um, that you're trying to help me through this, but it just ain't making sense because I'm trying to figure out what just happened. You know that that was that was our thing uh, throughout um, what the first or well, my thing throughout the first 27. Well, the my mother died at 10, so for the next 17 years, I'm going through this AQ, and in the middle of a little bit of EQ too emotions all over the place and IQ too because whereas I may have been on a kind of a, a level plane my grades start going down I can't think I can't concentrate you know I, I just can't get it together you know and then I'm trying to think and then once we y'all I'll never forget sitting in I don't know why this men, memories keep staying in my mind I remember we were sitting in this, uh, we moved to Houston, we were sitting in a lawyer's office. Three little old kids with my sister and my brother-in-law sitting in a lawyer's office. And uh, when I think back on it, it make you feel like you were being adopted or that you were a, um, what do they call an orphan? And I'm, it just didn't make sense to me. How could I be in this place when we just left Tyler with all his family. And at my grandmother's house, all his family is here. I, I don't get that. Why are we sitting in a, I'm 10. Why are we sitting in a lawyer's office or what I thought may have been, we were orphans or whatever. It's because everything around you has changed. My adaptability. The 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 next phase and that what they were doing, they were doing legal paperwork. That's all it was so that my sister could have rights and, you know, they had to go through all of that so that my sister could get benefits and all those kind of things. And I didn't get it because guess what? They didn't tell us that's what they were doing. They just drug you in there. My sister wasn't well, 23 years old anyway. What, what does she know? Took me a long time to get there to understand. You can't hold them accountable for none of that. 23, you were, it was, it was a major thing for them to take us in at 23 years old. 23, you don't know hardly nothing. And then you just got married too, got a little baby. You know, wanted she didn't lose her mind. Uh, Felicia said, a therapist told me that I have an adjustable <laughs> disorder. Is that the same thing? Is adaptability the same thing? Sometimes people don't adjust to change very well. I do not like it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I do not like change because it takes me back too far. Okay, is this permanent? Is this one of these things that I'm going through? And then later on, I learned, no, it's just a minor adjustment. You're having to learn how to deal with this adjustment. The more people you have on the team with you, uh, that um, understand and have gone through this, the better your journey will be. I'm willing to wage a bet that most of us got stuck because we didn't have people that had processed through these things either. The adaptability. I have not heard of AQ, but I see that I struggled with that for sure. Yeah, adapting to things, new things. That, that's why a lot of y'all are coming to the room, but you won't make the change. Sometimes you just still have problems adjusting to new things. I don't know how that's going to work out. You know, I don't know. What, that's because something moved you a long time ago. Because children are very apt. they able to adapt. Unless something happens. So unless something major happens. It's hard to adjust to new things. So when it comes down to us doing life and we wonder why we in these situationships. Lord, you didn't tell me I had to go through all that to go through life. Yeah, you're going to go through a lot. Uh, yesterday, um, we had the, my sister and I had the opportunity to um, go to the movies. And if y'all have not had an opportunity to see um, that, I don't know what you call it. It's like a TV show, but it's not on TV. It's like on an app. It's called The Chosen. It's a, a, a biblical story phenomenal writers within it. They take you into the room of back in the days of Jesus. And man, when I tell you they so very, very good is at the movies. And it was the part to where 
uh, Jesus was getting ready to, you're welcome, Felicia. When Jesus was getting ready to uh, send, he had appointed all of his disciples. And man, the way that they were, ooh, you could feel it. You know, when they were hearing his message and, oh my God, he was opening up revelation to them and they left everything. And Matthew was the one that just stood out to me. Matthew was, he was young, a young boy. And Matthew was so excited. Matthew just threw away everything. I don't want none of this stuff no more. And it, but it happened the way that they depicted it in the in the story was, uh, you know, Matthew was a tax collector, and sometimes when you're just doing your job, when you don't have the emotional intelligence, or the really that was an emotional intelligence to understand that uh, this house that you fixed to take from somebody is your daddy's house, your mama's house, but you don't care. All you saw were the numbers. Sometimes we call those people. Um, uh, what what is it? Uh, they on the spectrum sometimes. Um, I can't think of the name. It's just uh, evading me. Um, uh, anyway, it'll come back. But it looked like Matthew had a little bit of that, a lack of adaptability. Um, what do they call the people that's on the spectrum? Um, autistic. It looked like Matthew was a little autistic. He was so smart. You know, he was smart with those numbers, but he wasn't smart with people. He didn't realize that he was hurting his family, trying to collect the debt. And the soldiers had come in and they were getting ready to put his daddy in jail because the daddy was behind on his taxes. And Matthew came up behind him and realized, oh my God, I didn't know that was my dad's house that y'all were going to. So he gets to the door and he, you know, tells the guy, you know, I made a mistake. I made a mistake, whatever. But he's talking to his dad and his dad is angry. Like, Matthew, why did you not know that you don't treat people like that? You know, but all he has is this um, autistic ability to know numbers. That's all he knows. He doesn't. He has not adapted to the, the EQ just yet. And so it was only until, and then the crazy thing was, Matthew's father got rightfully angry with him at the moment about what he had done, and he disowned uh, Matthew. That opened up a door for a parable to come in. And though Matthew was going on about his life, he, this thing hurt him that his father was disowning him, was not allowing him to come back to their house anymore. So this is where Matthew meets Jesus along the way. And Matt and, and Jesus explains to him about this EQ. You know, he talks about, you know, if somebody, you know, hurts you, whatever he tells, they call it, he talks backwards. <laughs> he talks back. He, he says that if somebody uh, misuses you, you know, treat them well, you know. And then he got to the par the, the message about uh if you if you got something that you want to present at the altar go back and make it right with your brother. And, and then you come back here and it hit Matthew's heart. He wanted to follow Jesus, but he knew he couldn't follow Jesus with all his hurt and stuff in his heart, this thing he had with his dad. And, uh, and Matthew was bound and determined to get this right because he wanted to follow Jesus. So he goes back and y'all, it was a beautiful scene when he goes in and deals with his father, but he didn't know his, his father had ran into Jesus too. Just because he was the father doesn't mean that he didn't need some emotional intelligence always, also some adaptability. That adaptability to say that he's a child, he may be autistic, he may just have one way of looking at things. And so when Jesus comes in, Jesus is dealing with all of us on the level that we need to be dealt on, but he had dealt with the daddy too. So by the time Matthew gets back to his father, he's trying to atone for his wrong. He's trying to bring all these sacrifices. And he, he was bringing him the word of God. He said, but the rabbi said, you know, if, if you got an ought with your brother, you need to come back and make it right. And his father just started laughing. He said, we know, Matthew. He said, we were there. He said, you were there? Father had been listening to Jesus's message too. See, and what I'm saying is, see, sometimes this stuff that we've been in, can't nobody come get you out of that stuff for Jesus? using a parable over here that you understand. That's why he got to come into your situationship sometime so you can understand it and he can speak to you about your thing. So what happens is all the minds and hearts are coming in together and God creates this big old masterpiece. 
And you wonder how in the world did we work this out? Because we went through IQ. Yeah, you're smart, you're intelligent, but you're not smart about everything. We went through that EQ. You got to deal with the emotional intelligence of this. That's your father, that's your family. And then also I got to realize that's my child and they are still children doing things. And then I got to look at my AQ, the adaptability. Am I easy to adapt? No, the children are not going to do things the way we do it. No, my spouse is not going to do the way do things the way I do. No, my coworkers, my employees, they're not going to do things the way that I do it. But when you put them three together, there's a mystery that takes place. I step into the mystery of God. Oh my God, it makes sense. That's where my healing took place with the loss of my mom. I came into a place. I was not, you know, slow of learning. I went through trauma. And the very moment that I start, uh, people start coming into my life to help me to process this, my grades shot straight up, straight up in the 10th grade. But from, I think probably the eighth grade, yeah, probably from the seventh, well, probably the eighth grade, because now I'm dealing with the death of my mom. And then I'm dealing with peer pressure of going to middle school. And in Houston, they're a little different in Houston. That's what my upbringing was in Houston. And they're a little different. And you know, they, you're you going to get in with, that's like being on the highway. Either you're going to get in the flow of the traffic or you're not. And they were just a little different. But everybody knew I was from Tyler. Everybody that I came in contact with, that, that means I had some relational skills. Everybody knew I was from Tyler. They, all they, they equated it to Earl Campbell. That's all they knew, Earl Campbell. And I used to have little words that I would say that sound like East Texas. And they would always miss, and I never, it never bothered me. And I was like, what's wrong with them? <laughs> so what I, what I equated it to, whereas we dealt with tragedy, that the Lord literally took us from rags to riches overnight. Not only um, uh, financial um, upscales, but emotional upscales. Our neighbors, um, our uh, environment, y'all. I've 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 seen some things that uh, had I been stuck in my hometown, I wouldn't have seen. I wouldn't be able to identify with y'all. I promise you. But because I've been able to stretch outside the box and make it make sense, I said, "Oh, so this is for what you were calling me to eventually." And I had to make it through this thing, y'all. So I believe what God placed in me was a perseverance inside to survive. It's like, Marilyn, I got all the tools that you need. I just need you to keep walking. That's all I kept hearing God say. I just need you to keep walking. Y'all, I'm walking through tears. I'm walking through everything. God, I don't understand. I feel like I'm so behind. And Lord said, no, 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 keep walking. I got people that's going to come. That's where my group ultimate connections came from. You know, you're making the ultimate connections in life. These people are going to help you to make it to the next level if you'll just keep walking. And y'all, I did. And when I tell you, God has brought me into the company of some great people in my, in my life. They helped me to raise my IQ, my EQ, and my AQ. My EQ was the last one that came in, my, adapt, my ability to adapt, to change. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to understand you, but I can adapt to this because everybody, everybody's not in that category. It's a whole lot of people that do love you. And there's a whole lot of people that do care for you. And which one am I going to focus, focus on them? Uh, the adapt, the ability to adapt and to understand that though one may reject, one is going to accept. And that's why I feel like the salesman comes in me. You know, I can hit a hard 10 no's, but I'm going to hit that yes in a minute. Your adaptability to change. This is what makes great leaders. This is make what makes great partners. This is what make good friends. And it's what make great parents. Your ability to adapt to things. Amen. Well, this is just the introduction today. And uh, how many of you have enjoyed it so far and have learned something different? already? And we ain't even in the message yet. But you've learned something different already. Like, oh my God, I am ready for this message. Amen. Well, I'm going to open up and um, let's talk and let's talk and let's talk. And 
What have you learned different? What, what stood out to you today? Yeah, it's going to be good. What stood out to you today? And what is it that you need from God? Do you need to raise your IQ, your EQ, or your AQ? And some of you may say, I need all of them, but which one do you feel like you need to raise more of? So let's open up the floor for a uh, conversation on today. Let's have a talk. Anybody that'd like to share this one. Good morning, Miss Marilyn. Good morning, Regina. Um, do, I, do you hear background? My husband got his fan on. Do I need to go out of here? No, no, you're you good. Okay? You're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So definitely mine is, is going to be the adaptability to change, you know, just, you know, for one life without my son. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the one that I'm dealing with right now the most. Uh, it's, I mean, I... I have my ups and my down days. But just, you know, a lot of times I think about what you say, like when I'm, when I'm sad or, you know, want to burst out crying. I think about the, the funny stuff about him, the fun times, <laughs> the stuff he used to say, like, for instance, <laughs> uh, um, for instance, just as far as like cooking something, like some food he likes. Uh, I, I mean, my, uh, my my grandbaby was talking in the car yesterday. She was like, you know, my daddy loved Whataburger. I said, yes, Lord, he did. And um, she said, Gigi, what you think? You think he would have wanted that new bowl? I said, he would have said, my Lord, my Lord. He could sound <laughs> just like a preacher in church and be so funny. It'd be so funny. She said, yes, he would. I said, he'd be saying, my Lord, my Lord. I said, yes, he would have wanted that bowl. I said, who knows? He might have a taste of it in heaven. You know, you don't know what, what all they get to experience. They get probably get to experience everything up there, you know? Um, but yeah, that's that's one of my main things is just uh, having to to deal with that. I didn't even know there was a, a quota, you know, so. The AQ? I mean, yes, the AQ. Mm -hmm. But I mean, doesn't it make sense, know. Regina? It really does. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah. That, that's what keeps us stuck in places because we're not able to adapt. And, and Regina, in your, in your situation, that's, that's normal because we, we are human beings and mm -hmm. we are not cut out to be losing stuff. You know what I mean? And especially kids and parents because we come into this world attached to these things. And you mean to tell me you're going to give it to them and you're going to take it away? That's why a lot of people make a decision not to have kids. Right. That's why a lot of people make decisions to stay away from their family. It ain't that they want to stay away from the family. It just hurts too much. Does that make sense to y'all? Mm -hmm. They can't adapt to change. I can't deal with all these changes going on. You know, and it's like they just check out. But down inside, there's a longing. I don't know about y'all, but I would rather, I know even Miss Regina, I, she would rather have spent this um short amount of time with her son than none because what would life have been without him amen <laughs> <laughs> and you see it uh, it's so it's so funny but like sweet touched a lot of people i mean my goodness it's even a preacher said you know that day i ain't ever seen so many young people in church at one time <laughs> and a lot of them got I me mean, yes the women of course because i say all the time he was just like he was the black version of the bachelor where he made every woman think she was it, that they was about to be at the altar. You know, it was just crazy. I scroll down the timeline and I see so many women that I don't even know. Oh, my husband. Oh, my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. But just as many women was just as many men standing and crying mm -hmm. and just as many women, you know, sharing like his birthday is Christmas Day. So I was, and he always fussed about, you know, I don't, it's not fair. Everybody think it's not good to be born on Christmas because you just get one gift. And, you know, everybody was, well, here's your gift. It's birthday and Christmas all at once, you know. So I said I was going every day for, you know, 25 days, put a picture up uh, um, of just try to, you know, recognize him. Because, baby, that was one thing. I had to get a cake. I had to have his present. This is Christmas. These are Christmas. <laughs> this is birthday. You know, if you're going to give me money, you got to give me 
fifty dollars for birthday and fifty dollars for Christmas. Uh uh-uh. uh. Make sure you separate it all. So you know that's that was one of the things. You know, and he had one big birthday party, like when he was uh, I think he turned six. But we did that in August. We did we did a, a summer birthday bash for him. I think when he turned six, that's how, that's the one and only party we had for him. But because every time at Christmas, people would, would be with their family. So, you know, it was like, nobody will never come to my party. Nobody is, you know, so we, you yeah. you have to try to, you know, figure and work it out. So, but uh, I said, I'd do that. I said, I'm pretty sure he's pretty happy now. <laughs> I know, I know. And, and it's like, you know, taking the bitter with the sweet and, you know, different things like that. And eventually what will happen, ladies, whether you know it or not, you teach your mind how to process stuff too. You know, the more you struggle with it, your mind is going like, oh, we're struggling, we're struggling, we struggle. Don't do that, don't do that. But the more you give your um, uh, your mind uh, the freedom to relax in that, the mind is. And I tell you, when I tell you, it's a smart organism. That juggle will adjust. You know, put stuff in place, and it'll put it in the right place if you give it time. It was designed to do that already. That's why I say the it, it's it's life is so it's so precious, it's so it's so real. And everything we go through, it's like, oh my God, Lord, I don't know how you did that, but I'm gonna stay out your business over there. And I'm just gonna say I'm so glad that you did. Now, I can't tell y'all today that it happened. Do I do I not remember my mom? Or does Regina not remember her son? No way on this earth. And Regina's is she just in the early stages. Mine has been 47 years. 47 years. And I still talk about my mom like she's still here. <laughs> and I didn't really know I didn't really know that much about her, but 10 years of her. The rest of it God had to reveal. Because she still sits with me. Sometimes she talked, y'all, I'll never forget one time, ooh, y'all, I was sitting in the middle, we were, it was at a church that I was, I was serving at, and um, we were, um, it was getting rough, that, that, that emotional thing, and even that adaptability, I was having some problems adapting, ooh, yeah, that's right, sure, I was having a problem adapting, you know, to, you know, I don't know, some stuff that just, you know, whatever. And so anyway, I'll never forget one Thursday night, I was getting ready for my singles class. And it was like routine, the things that I did. I was so grateful for the environment that I was in. So I overlooked a whole lot. And, uh, and I had been experienced with people enough to know that, you know, people can be very cruel or whatever. And y'all, I was sitting in that office one day and tears began to start flowing down my eye. I don't even know what I was hurting about. I think, I think God knows what I was hurting about. But uh, it was it was deep. It was deep. And uh, first time in years that my mom showed up. Now, all I heard was dry your eyes. You already have you already have a mother. Y'all heard these things so clear. Nobody else was in the room with me. And uh, you're not looking for another mother figure. You've already had a mother figure in your life. And anything that does not come in and line up like that, you have a right to reject. These are things, and I know it wasn't her speaking. It probably was, it was just her presence there. And it was the spirit of God really speaking. You already have a mother, but God was using a simile of what she meant to me. And y'all, I took that. I said, no, I do not. I'm not looking for a mother figure in my life. You know, I thank God for mothers that come in to land, to stand alongside my mom. But I ain't looking for no mother figures to come into my life. To me, I had the best one it was. There are some people still looking for that mother figure that can put you in some situationships, you know. And I always say, if your mother, you know, like say, for instance, if there's a surrogate mom, whatever, and your surrogate mom never helps you to remember your biological mom, hmm, that's, 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 that's something to me. They want to be all it is to you. No, the reality is that that person has a biological parent and nobody gets to come in and take their place. Bottom line, everybody else comes in 
You know, like me, I come in to be mother figures to many of you guys, but I'm not that mother. I come in to add to the, I should never come in and take away from who your mothers are. I come in to add. That's why we got a bunch of mommies in this room. We all come in with different eclectic views of it. Amen. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. And we walking with you with Squeak these 25 days. I see it posted up there every day. Amen. Anybody else? Uh, I see Mrs. Um, An uh, Anita said it's the AQ for her, the adaptability. Yeah, we don't like change a whole lot. Anybody else want to share this morning? Yes. Amen. Yes, you definitely add. Yeah, Regina said, yes, me too. Best mama this side of heaven. Yeah, and you ought to think about your mother like that. Shirley, I hear her talking about her mom all the time. And Miss Kathy, they talk about all the time. These people were, were precious to us. Amen. Anybody else? Tanisha? Yes, good morning, Tanisha. Um, I will be the adaptability. Will be all of them, but the one that stands out uh, the most will be the adapted to um, the change uh, in my life that I'm going through now um, because um, I can share with y'all. So how I deal with um, stuff within my life like that gets me, I, I drink. And so that's something that um, I'm still struggling with now to get past that because I don't want to just run to that to try to just forget about it within that time being because it's still going to be there at the end of the day. I just now figuring it out. But just adapting to get away from that and adapting within the the changes that's coming around me because I see that a lot of things are um moving out of my life, which is good, but it's adaptive of dealing with um, dealing with the lonely part of it because of people that uh, I have to let go for my good. So adaptive dealing with that. Um, I know like last night we had a deal, the 25 deal, and I, I can't wait for Thursday. I promise I can't wait for that. <laughs> but I can't. But um, just adaptive of dealing with that, just the whole change, uh, my lifestyle that I'm used to because everybody is used to the party, Tanisha, and that's what Tanisha was used to and stuff. So now Tanisha don't want that anymore. I don't want that. I want to, I still want to be that fun Tanisha, but I don't want to be the one that um, with the drinking involved, the heavy drinking and stuff, you know to where um, I can actually share this. My brother um, did a video of me when I was drunk. Wow. And he shared it with me. He thought it was just being, you know, sister acting funny. This is my youngest brother who looks up to me. And so when he shared that video with me, that made me feel some type of way. And it, and it broke me down to where I was like, this is how you act? <laughs> you know, th this is where you act, Tanisha? No, this is not what you want, you know? And I just couldn't do nothing but thank him. And then I had to explain to him why I thanked him. And me and my mama had a long conversation over that too. So uh, that's the part that I wanted to share that uh, deep with uh, Daphne. So thank you for letting me share that. That's a good one, Tanisha. And, and thank you for your transparency. Uh, with that, um, you know, uh, anybody that's never had to deal with it, they wouldn't understand the struggle that comes with it, you know, but um, uh, life, uh, life is filled with um, situationships, things that we um, uh, grab hold to for comfort, because that's what you're dealing with. You're, you're dealing with a lonely state, and that's your comfort thing, and what we've got to do is get in there and bring in that was just you just stopped at one thing drinking which probably leads to some other things too but if none of those things are really identifying who you are they're just situations and what we're trying to do is get you 
to where you really belong. That's why I hope and pray that you do come into those private sessions because we got to unfold some stuff because there's some stuff packed in there. I guarantee you that keeps triggering the drinking, you know, and that's the thing you have to unfold from. So keep coming in the room, Tanisha, you're grown. Listen, you have come so far already in this short amount of time. You've been in our room. You have, I've seen you change so, so, so much, but it's obvious that the root up underneath it needs to be dealt with. And God is coming after that. Amen. So thank you for sharing, Tanisha. I will go to Cookie Marie and then we'll go to Amanda this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I, I was looking at, uh, I was thinking back in my younger days when we talk about adaptability and emotional, but I come from a, a service family. So my dad did a lot of traveling because he was in the Air Force. So we as children, we had to learn how to adapt to different situations and different people. But it, I noticed within the siblings, it also messed with our emotional quota because mm -hmm. you would get, you know, from for me, I was, I'm always kind of like, I was always the friendly one. I make friends real quick. Hi, how you doing? You know, and, and all of that. And I was very personal where versus my sister, my oldest sister, she just shut down because she didn't want to have no friends because she knew that we wasn't going to be there long right. and, and that kind of thing. And me, I was like, well, that's okay. We can write each other. We can do this here, you know, you know, and she would, it really, the being able to adapt to different situations will affect your emotional quota. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they're, they're very, very, I, I would call them sisters. Or, uh, you know, they're very, very close because when you adapt to different situations, your emotions are going to change. That's right. That's right. You, have to, you have to be able to from 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 like I like when I look at my siblings and me, you know, I was able to adapt more so because I didn't I didn't put that shield up as a kid. But my sister being older than me, she put that shield up and she didn't want to be friendly. And and you know, it, it was a, like a twofold thing. She didn't get to experience the joy of having friends. And I had to experience the hurt of losing friends. But I realized that I never lost any friends mm -hmm. because right now, even today, I can talk about, oh yeah, you remember when we used to be over there in Germany? I remember you, you know, just because Facebook came into play and people started pick, oh, I remember her, oh, I remember her. And it, it helped me adapt to different areas in my life because I realized I never lost anybody. That's right. That's right. You know, I, so I thank God for that. And I was just kind of just thinking back then, you know, that those two are, are close together. The adaptability and the emotional, the adaptive quota and the emotional quota, they really run hand in hand to each other. You can be smart, and we talked about the intellectual that 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 comes from a, a process of applying yourself and learning uh, different things. That's but we right. need to even apply ourselves and our emotional and our adaptability because they they really make human for me. And I see that makes you tick. Mm -hmm. that, that makes people tick if that makes sense to yeah. anybody. You know, thank you for letting me share. Amen. That was a great one. That's the, y'all see why I need y'all in this room. Y'all help me to think through things because I never thought about the civil servants, uh, civil service uh, individuals and the families. Uh, can you imagine how hard it is for them to adapt to change or, or if they did not, it was, it's hard. And like she said, her sister did have uh, challenges with that, but that was, that, that's major when your parents have decided to be a part of the civil service and they're moving around all the time and you can't always just make friends. Um, you know, and that if you, if you take it too personal, it's like, well, I just got a new friend 
and I'm having to move around all the time, but you learn to be adaptable. You learn a lot of different things if you would just allow your mind, you know, to relax. Because when you're with your parents, your parents are helping you to uh, experience some things. Like now, some things that parents take their children through, uh, children are having to adapt to. Um, I do believe it's all working out for the good. I really believe that, you know, because who else are going to go into those environments uh, to, um, you know, uh, to make sense of those things? All of us have been assigned to somewhere. Oh, that's what I was trying to get to y'all at the end of the movie with Chosen. Jesus had put all the disciples together according to their personalities. And he sent them out. And y'all, it was so heartwarming. Uh, when I think it was Simon was the one that uh, was sitting with everyone after Jesus had made the assignments and Simon had to pull everybody together. You're going to be okay. You know, we're going to be okay. But when they came together to pray before they got sent out to go where they needed to go, y'all, it was, what would I tell you? You could, oh, you could tell that these were some people that had an anointing from, from God to write this story because they were all getting ready to be sent out to places they do that they knew not to remind me of the civil service. Sometimes that's what parents have to do, or that's what loved ones do. Pray over your family members before they get sent out. This is what you need to do with your children for those kids, kids go off to college and all that. You need to pray over those children before they go out because they're getting ready to go out to a world that they know not of. When they graduate from high school, a world that they know not of. When those children are getting ready to go to school in the morning time, a world that they know not of. Why do you think your pastor does benediction? Remember I told you don't leave before the benediction? The benediction comes in because they send, they get ready to send you out to the world, send out to the masses. There's an anointing, there's a rhyme and a rhythm for everything that God does. But uh, that was a good one, Marie, to talk about You know how hard it is when you have to move around a whole lot adaptability to folks that you know are their parents moving all the time he's got his benefits but you can't see it at that particular time and if you don't stretch your mind to become adaptable and relational and parents it's going to be up to the parents to be connected with the families when they're doing that you know so that everybody has a part or they understand you know what's going on so good one good one marie and we will dive into that one more uh mrs amanda Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Um, so I, um, it was actually the part when you were talking about walking through fear that really resonated with me. Honestly, these past like three days, this is like the third time that I've heard it. And I know there's been this ongoing theme that God has been um, trying to help me or get me in a place where I, where I allow myself to feel because I don't get what I need to get out of certain situations if I don't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, if at any, any time I feel any kind of fear, doubt, worry, automatically, you know, I go to God in prayer and I'm like, okay, God, this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling this fear. I'm feeling this doubt. I'm feeling this worry. You know, I'm going to lay it at your feet. I'm going to lay it at your feet. Um, give it to you. And I'm going about my business. I'm not going to worry about it no more. But I'm realizing that, you know, giving it to him is kind of just recognizing that it's there and then going to his word. And, you know, even in prayer, he is um, reminding me who he is and who he created me to be so that I can go out in spite of feeling this fear and be courageous and be brave to do the things that, you know, he's called me to do. And that's the like with the adaptability and the emotional intelligence, them going, you know, hand in hand in order to adapt, I have to allow myself to feel these things. So I have to walk in fear. I have to walk, you know, knowing I have this worry, I have to do it anyway, because this is where he's called me to be. This is where he's placed me. So that's just kind of what resonated with me. That's good, Amanda. That was a good analogy. Uh, She's talking about walking through fears and allowing herself to, but they say, if you sit in your problem long enough, the answer will come. But if you run away from fear all the time, you'll never face your fears. And that's part of adaptability as well. That's a part of life. 
that I'm going to go through things fearfully. When you get on a roller coaster, if you ain't scared, I don't know. I don't know. But when you get on there, what are you doing? You're facing your fears. You still scared? Why? It leaves me. I'm maybe I'm talking to me. Ain't no rails on the side of that thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, my inside turning inside out. All of these things. You're having to face the fears in life, but to press on through it anyway. You know, and you'll be amazed at the things that we have found ourselves afraid of. We're afraid of love. We're afraid of giving. We're, we're afraid of connecting. You know, we're afraid of processing. We're afraid of all of that. So processing may even um, show up as uh, you didn't look at this thing thoroughly. And sometimes it may make you question your ability. How did I miss that? No, it, sometimes we got to be steadfast in a thing, unmovable. I'm not going to move until I process this through. And knowing that in the end, it's going to work for my good. It's a hard, listen, sometimes you got to sit in that thing long enough and, you know, deal with the fears of whatever, the fear of losing someone or the fear of uh, the unknown, because you don't even have to lose. Sometimes we think because we watch TV, we watch other people that this is what's going to, that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen with you. And you got to be careful of allowing your mouth to go into that because you ask you, you shall have whatsoever you say. Sometimes it's been self-fulfilling prophecies that came into our lives. It wasn't that that's what God was going to do. It's just that we stepped in God's way. No, just let it, let it process through. I'm going to bring my IQ in. I'm going to use the intelligence of what God has given me. I'm going to bring my EQ in. I need to bring my emotions into place. I can't live life without any type of emotion. And then I got to bring my AQ and I got to learn to adapt. Oh, okay. So your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. Oh, your spouse. Oh, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your children. Oh, your ways are not my ways. They're not my thoughts. Your pastor. Oh, your ways are not my ways and they're not my thoughts. But the Bible also says, can two walk together? except they agree. If you're going to uh, walk with uh, a uh, an uh, emotional um, adaptability or whatever, you get around other people that got that kind of adaptability too. Y'all are coming in these rooms and I can only imagine that um, some folk y'all walking with before y'all came in here, y'all not walking with them anymore. Because you realize y'all were not going in the same direction at this particular time. I gotta learn how to adapt to that new thing. These are these been my these been my I thought friends for a long time, but I didn't know that they really were acquaintances. And I'm having to learn how to do that. Uh Mrs. Uh thank you, Mrs. Amanda. Mrs. Um 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 give me just a second. Stacy. Stacy said hers is her, she's got an AQ and it's about being single. I get it. It's because she was married for 36 years. How do you readjust to that? I don't even know what single folk do no more. And 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 a part of it is I don't want to be single. You know, I don't want the label. Sometimes we think about the label that comes with it. We got all these misconceptions. It's because you've been single, you've been married for a long time. You don't know what single single people been out here doing. That's why I tell you, it's better to process that stuff through if you can, where you are, because starting over ain't easy either. Because you got to learn a whole lot of stuff. That's just like being in, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It's like somebody being in prison for 37 years, and then they come out to the free world. They don't know what this cell phones and computers, all this stuff, they don't know what that is. It's the same thing in marriage. Not that you've been in jail, but you've been connected and bonded to something, you know, whether you liked it or not. And now you're having to separate, you're separating from that and you're having to make it make sense. That's why it's good to have sponsorship along people to walk with you through life. And that's what I come to do as a life coach. I come to walk with you with these things to let you know it's not as bad as you think it is. It's just, you've never been here before. You never had to think about this kind of stuff. 
If you y'all were raising kids together and, and that could even come if it was a loss of a spouse and you trying to raise these kids, I can't adapt to this new space over here. You can adapt to anything, but I think even in the midst of it, these are the things that make you go in there and uh, you know what? I think I do want my marriage. I think I want to lay down my weapons. It's a lot you can learn through that. Because being single, and that, that's one reason that I, I used to put the singles in the room and the married people in the room too. That's what a, that's what relational real talk is doing right now. Because when you start hearing different comments, it's teaching you how we need to grow. Oh, you know what? I think I want to fight for my marriage. I'm not trying to be single again. All single people, I'm hearing what married people are going through. You know what? I better not push that bar too quick. I better learn as much as I can. Yes, it's different out here. Um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Stacy, I think she had her hand up and we'll let this be the last one and we'll come back in tomorrow because I know these are going to be some deep, 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 deep conversations. Y'all listen, y'all put y'all seeds on the ground last week on behalf of this and this is what y'all are getting. Y'all prep, when I tell y'all pressed last week, y'all pressed with that sewing and look what's coming out of it. Just fresh oil. Come and get everything that you need, ladies. Get every, don't leave nothing on the table. Cause we're getting ready to walk into 2023 with a lighter, lighter load. I'm not walking. I'm not doing the things I used to do. I'm not even, listen, I'm gonna process things a little bit different. So Miss Stacy, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, good morning. Um, good morning. I have been blessed and enlightened. I've just made it to work. Um, yes, AQ is definitely, uh, minds and it is it's just adapting after 34 years of marriage um in the process of going through a divorce um i've been married longer than i've been single um but that's why i'm so thankful to get to know my new family so that i don't make the same mistakes that i did when i was younger um i'm 58 years old and um, no, I don't want to be alone, um, but I don't want to rush into nothing. And of course, I'm, 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 I'm not single yet, but I definitely, well, I don't see any, um, I don't see the marriage being restored. So it's just getting familiar with just even right now in my life of just being by myself although i'm staying with my brother and his teenage daughter i mean i have a lot of family support um but just having that companionship where i, I really looking at myself now I, I gave so much into my marriage i mean i i gave everything so now it's like who am i you know i, I gave all of myself for so long now I'm having to look at me and focus on me. I'm enjoying it, um, but I want to be whole. I want to be healthy. I want to be productive because I know that everything I know that everything that I'm going through at this point is not because it's not for me. It's to help someone else. So thank you. I just wanted to say that part this morning. Amen. Excuse Stacey, the thank noise. You. That's okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Regina put something about, she said it's a new norm and it really is. And I'm so, when I tell you, we're so glad to have you in the room. So glad to have you joining the family uh, because I don't believe it was by coincidence that God brought you in here during this season of your life. I think it was complete purpose in God. All yes. of y'all, I think we all came together because there's so much purpose in us coming together because some of us been walking on the journey for a minute and it's like we picked up another sister along the way. Oh, it's kind of like those disciples being sent out. Oh, uh, Stacy, I need you to go get, I need you to go. I mean, uh, Regina, I need you to go pair up with Stacy or Miss Felicia, I need you to go pair up with Marie or whatever. You know, this is where we come to um, uh, lighten the load for our sisters along the way. And then we start realizing ain't no hood like a sisterhood, a true sisterhood. Oh my God. Ain't no hood like this here. So we just thank you. And uh, we we look forward to hearing more of your story and getting to know you and your marriage. And, 
you know, all of that. Cause I know that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all been a process and, uh, you know, God is doing some amazing things. So I say to all of y'all, you ain't seen nothing yet. You hear me? Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. What is that thing doing? You haven't seen anything yet. And um, best is yet to come. Just wait on it. The best is yet to come. And uh, I'm just so glad that we can all do this together. This group is amazing and caters to our individual needs. Yes, it really does. And have you ever thought about what could what 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 was I doing before this group? What what was life like before this group before I came into this group? As a matter of fact, I do not want to do without this ever again. I just don't. I just can't see myself doing without. And that's what makes you come in and we process these things together and allow God to take us from what I call faith to faith and glory to glory. And he always does. He always has a way. Amen. Well, let's, uh, we're going to close out this morning. Uh, I'm thankful uh, that the Lord is really allowing us to, um, you know, get in here and learn more about him. He's an amazing guy, y'all. He's amazing. He always comes in right on time and he knows how to do it, do it grand, not big, but grand. Cause that's kind of, that's the type of God that we serve. Amen. Well, let's get ready to dismiss this morning. I want to say thank you to everyone. We'll be back in tomorrow. We're going to be focusing on our IQ tomorrow on the IQ tomorrow. I would have loved to have been in the family from the beginning. Yeah, we all, it's, it's been, it's been a, it's been a great journey and you'll get a chance to hear some of the stories of the lady that's been here. It's been, it'll be 10 years uh, in uh, January. Uh, right now, it's 10 years now because I formed the group in November of 2012, and it's been it's been 10 years, 20, uh, yeah, 20, yeah, 2012. I formed the group, and we launched out in January of 2013. So I've got also, y'all, we're getting ready to do our first uh, girl talk for um, 2023, uh, and it's going to be a mother-daughter tea. We're going to do one. And I've already got the ladies that I want to be a part of it. I'm going to call y'all names out now because I haven't told y'all about it. But I want Felicia Johnson and her mom to be there. I need Mrs. Chick Chandler, Mrs. Chick Holmes and her mom to be there. Um, I need, um, I wish that uh, Talia, I mean, uh, Tanisha, yeah, Talia, uh, Talia Smith, who was on the call with us last night, her and her mom. Her mom is Veronica Smith, for those of y'all that don't know it. Um, there were some other names that God gave me last night and I'll think of them as I go along, but, uh, mother daughter time, you know, to come and sit down at the table, even Shirley and her daughter Raven to come and sit down at the table with us. Um, even if Mrs. Kathy and her daughter could come down and sit down at the table. And of course me and my daughter, Jessica, to come and sit down at the table. We're doing mother daughter. It's going to be amazing mother daughter time sitting down with one another. So uh, that will be our first girl talk for 2023. And uh, we are dealing with building those relationships between mothers and daughters, because that's what we're leading up to for the upcoming retreat. And uh, I also want to get that plugged in for Mrs. I think Ms. Regina knows about the retreat, but also for Mrs. Stacy and anybody else is just joining into the group. We do have our uh, dream builders only, um, a girl talk getaway, girl getaway, um, April the 20th through the 23rd at Broken Bow, Oklahoma. And we want to invite you guys to join in with us uh, to be a part of that. And yes, she said, I'm going. Uh, ladies, don't forget, we need to get those deposits in. I think the full price of it was what, $250. Uh, the, the deposit $75 need to be in by December 15th and then the remaining by February the 10th I think it's the 20th I think that's what it was get the final payment in then because we'll be leaving in April going there so it's a big old family thing you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss nothing Stacy. <laughs> go on in and be a part of it all amen those of you that are flying in I want I want you guys to get it too can you please send to me yes ma'am I will and uh, anybody that I don't have your email addresses I need to get those because that's where all of the information is going out to going out to is that your emails so we will definitely keep you guys posted all right well y'all have a wonderful day on today um uh, father we thank you so much for your presence i know you've been here uh you have you're opening up those doors and uh father you're helping us to you know be real and in the moment no more will we be hiding behind life and the things that have gone on in life we will not 
uh, we're going to be in this space. And Lord, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. Thank you for people that are helping us to navigate through these things and help us to know that you are not alone. So Father, thank you. As we get ready to dismiss, go to our various job. Bless those ladies that have been on the line already. They've already gotten their day started. I pray you would help them to stop for a moment and uh, come into oneness with you, not to rush too quick, not to go out too fast, but to get their assignment this morning. Don't go into any other assignment except for the assignment that God has given to you so that the day can move smoothly. So Father, thank you. Until we meet again, be with us, go with us, talk to us, breathe with us, help us to go out there and learn about the IQ, the EQ, and the AQ. And let's put it all together this week in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys be blessed. I look forward to coming back with you on tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.